Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to build this. This is a super compact flood and drain ebb and flow hydroponic system. Let's get to it. So with the system I'm about to build, I'm trying to achieve the most compact design for the most productive system that you can have in a small area, be it a grow room, a balcony, or just outside in your backyard. So for the system we're building, you'll need some storage containers that stack in such a way that they don't collapse into each other. So this design is a fairly universal design and you'll probably be able to find it in most hardware stores. You'll need some 13 millimeter piping uh, pump that will achieve the head that you require, some clay balls, a timer with 15 minute increments. You'll also need a set of these. Now these are a flood and drain outlet system with adjustable risers. So I've had a long look for something similar at a hardware store that you can adapt and Apart from some sewage vent outlets that you can make to suit your purpose, it actually turned out cheaper for me to just buy the specifically made outlets off eBay. I'll include in the description a link to where I bought these ones, as well as the equivalent link for a US product on both eBay and Amazon. Lastly, if you are going to be changing the reservoir regularly, you want to drain on the lower container so that you make your life a lot easier when it comes time to change the reservoir. You can adapt this system to where you are putting it by doing away with the bottom container if you had the top grow bed placed on a table or another surface where you can then have a reservoir that you slide underneath and then remove to dump the nutrient every time you want to refresh the nutrients in the system. This way, you're not having to lift the system full of plants every time. This also is good for the plants as you're not disturbing them every nutrient change. I always forget the drill and the hole saw. You'll need a drill and a hole saw. A hole saw to match your outlet size. So, in the top container, we're gonna drill two holes, both at the same end of the grow bed. Now, some people may argue that you want them at opposite ends, but for my future applications of this system, I'm going to have them both at one end of the bed so that they both are able to drain into a small area where I'll have a different reservoir than this one for future videos. So, finding the spot that you want the holes, starting forward with your drill, and then once the center hole is drilled, reverse so that you don't rip the plastic. Now we can just add in our stand pipes. Now we can add in our pump. So we'll just take a section of 13 millimeter pipe, roughly the height of the reservoir, cut that, attach it to the inlet, attach this to our pump, flip it back and on top of the reservoir, and now we have the pump set up and ready to go. So the reason I bought these and didn't make them myself is because 
they're purpose built for application. They give a really good seal on the bottom of the container, which is good if your reservoir isn't directly underneath your grow bed and they're adjustable. So each of these sections is removable and you can adjust the height of the inlet and the outlet to suit your application or grow bed height. This is really useful because it means that for deeper rooted plants, you can raise the level of your hydrogen and raise the level of the water that's being pumped into the system. It also allows you to program in some redundancy if you're worried about a pump failure by adding to the inlet an extra bit of height so that when the water drains back down through the inlet on the off cycle of this grow bed, you will always be left with a certain amount of nutrient and water so that if your pump fails, you have a fairly decent amount of time to go out and replace the pump. So I've now filled up the bottom reservoir with enough water to show you how it works. And before I add in the hydrogen, we'll turn on the pump and see how the bed floods and drains to give us some idea of what's happening when the hydrogen's in place. Now, it won't take as much volume to fill the grow bed once the hydrogen is in place. So rather than having 30 liters of water cycling every 15 minutes into the top bed, you're probably only gonna have about five or 10 liters in the top bed at any one time. So the pump's on and it's filling the bed up. And once the pump fills the bed up enough to reach the set level on this standpipe, it will then start to drain through this pipe and back into the reservoir. Now, the reason I haven't got an air stone in this system is that the water cascading down from this standpipe is actually creating enough aeration within the system. Also, the flood and drain technique itself tends to allow the roots enough time in the air to absorb the oxygen requirements that they need. So not only are you getting oxygenation of the nutrient solution in the system, but every cycle, the plant's roots are exposed to air and therefore oxygen. So if you are gonna go ahead and try and build something like these standpipes, just remember to make sure that the exit standpipe is larger than the entry standpipe so that you get an adequate exit of nutrient solution and the pump, no matter how strong it is, can't overtake the nutrient solution exiting the system, which will then cause the grow bed to overflow. So if I now turn off the pump, we'll see that the nutrient solution actually drains back down in through the inlet, through the pump, once it's off. So the pump's off, and now the nutrient solution will drain back down through the inlet, through the pump, and drain the contents of the grow bed. Now, because of this, we can actually control the flooding and draining of the grow bed with a simple mechanical electrical timer attached to the pump's electrical source. So by alternating on and off in 15 minute increments, you can turn the pump on and off, giving a 30 minute on off cycle 
24 hours a day. Now, there's a lot of different opinions on what the perfect cycling is. I'm not here to argue what the best cycle system is. I'm just here to give you the tools to put the cycle in place. I do an on-off 15-minute rotation. So every second pin I turn on, which then means that the pump is running for 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off over a 24-hour cycle, and then it just repeats. Works for me. You may have a different cycle. So now that we know that the standpipes are working properly, we can go ahead and fill our grow bed with hydrogen clay balls. And there you go. A super compact flood and drain, ebb and flow grow bed. Now, if this is your final product and you're gonna place this on top of a table or near a drain or something like that, uh, I'd highly recommend putting a tap just on the bottom of your reservoir so that you're not having to lift the grow bed and the plants off the top every reservoir change. Now, designing the way that you change your reservoir in any hydroponic system is extremely important because you're going to get lazy and you want to make it as easy as possible to do maintenance on the system. Now, having to lift a grow bed full of plants every time just isn't practical. Having it be able to be passively drained just by turning a tap is ideal. I'm not going to use the reservoir of this setup as the reservoir for this grow bed. I've actually got other plans for this grow bed in future videos. So I won't be adding a tap today, but get excited, more things to come. All right, I hope I've given you some ideas for your smaller spaces. Uh, verandas, balconies, grow rooms. Flood and drain systems are fantastic and this makes them super portable as well as super versatile for whatever space you've got available. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. Like and subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.